What's up everyone? Welcome back. I'm Nick. In this video, we're going to talk about shapes. SwiftUI has a couple shapes that are preloaded into the framework and we're going to look at how we can add them to the screen and make them look really cool. Now, shapes sound simple, but shapes are super important in SwiftUI especially because we can use them not only to add a plain circle to the screen, but we can use them to shape our other views. So if we wanted a circular button or if we wanted a circular image, we could use a shape to make it look exactly how we want it to look. All right, so I'm back in our Xcode project. And again, I'm gonna create a new file for the code that we're gonna write in this video. So let's right click on the navigator on the left side. Let's add a new file. This again will be a Swift UI view. And I'm gonna call this one Shapes Bootcamp. Hit enter and let's hit resume on the canvas on the right side when we get into our new file. Now this video is all about shapes as you know and not about text. So we don't need this text component in our file here. So let's delete that and let's add a shape. Now Xcode has a bunch of shapes that come preloaded into the code and a circle is one of them. So I'm gonna add this by clicking the plus sign in the top right and searching for a circle. We can see it, I will double click on it and we'll add it right to the code. And as I've mentioned before, you can always just type in circle directly with the open and close parentheses. You don't need to use the library. And you can see immediately that we get a nice, perfectly rounded circle in our screen. Now, the first thing we're going to want to do to our circle, of course, is change the color. Uh, by default, it's black, but we can change it by calling dot fill. We can use this content option here, and then we can add a color. It's already color blue for us. In the future, we're going to get into adding special colors and gradients to this. But right now, just know you can fill this with pretty much any color you want. We can do red. We can do green. And for basic shapes, instead of fill, we could also do dot foreground color and do pink. Uh, and that would also change the color of the circle. Now, instead of filling the circle, one other thing we can do on shapes is set the stroke color. So let's call dot stroke. And then we can see that the circle, instead of filling, we get a nice outline for a circle, which is pretty useful. We can customize this stroke a little bit as well. So instead of just calling it directly, let's call dot stroke with content. And within the content section, we can also add colors. So color dot red. And now we have a red outline. We can go even further. We can call dot stroke. We'll look for the one with line width, with content and line width. So I can do color, we'll do blue, and line width, we can do 30. So we get a nice thick line on our circle, so we can customize that as well. And then we can get really fancy by customizing this outline as well. Let's call dot stroke. And this time, let's look for the one that has style at the end of it. So it has stroke, content of shape style, and then style of stroke style. Let's hit enter on that one. And then let's change the color to color.orange. And the second parameter is looking for a stroke style. It's telling us stroke style. So let's just start typing a stroke style and open the parentheses. And then we get a completion with that. We can add all of these parameters to the stroke style. Line, width, cap, join, meter. So I'm gonna hit enter on that. And we actually don't need all of these inputs but let's use a couple of them. Let's do line width, let's set this to 20. Line cap, let's start with dot and then but. And then we don't really need the line join or the meter limit, so let's just delete those for now. And for the dash, this looks like an array of CG float. So how we're gonna do that is creating an array by adding the brackets, just like it had in the, in the preview there. And then let's put a dash of 10. And then we don't need a dash phase, so I'm gonna delete that as well. And when you start making shapes of your own, you'll get used to this, but 
you can see that we have a really cool outline of our circle here and we can customize this super easily we can change the width let's do 30 we can change the butt so instead of having these square edges here we can do uh, round this doesn't this looks like it's not enough spacing between each so let's change the dash to maybe 30 so now we have a different maybe like a sausage looking circle I wouldn't use this in an app, but you can play around with this to get some really cool shape styles. One final thing I want to point out on this shape is that we could call dot trim. And trim is really useful. We can do the from and to completion. And this basically lets us only show a portion of a shape. So this right here is a full circle. We can see 100%. But if we wanted maybe a half of a circle, well, we could trim the circle in half. And we can do that by changing the trim. So from 0 to 1.0 is the entire circle. So from 0 0.5 to 1.0 would be half of the circle. We can change this further, maybe 0 0.2 to 1.0, and we'll get the majority, 80% of the circle. And what's really cool is if you combine the stroke with the trim. So let's add a dot stroke. This has to be after this trim modifier. So we'll add stroke here. And we'll use the one with a line width down here. So we'll do content and line width. Let's change the color to color dot purple. And we'll do the line width of maybe five. Let's do 50, it would be better. And now we have this really cool looking circle where this could be something in an app maybe where it was like a loading indicator and you animated this trim to 100% when it was complete. Right now the person's at like 80% or something. So just another cool thing that we can do with all of our shapes. And speaking of shapes, I wanna show you guys some of the other shapes that are preloaded into Xcode. So let's comment the trim and the stroke out again. We're back to our basic circle. So instead of a circle, I'm gonna comment out this circle here and let's instead add an ellipse. And we can see here that we have an ellipse which is basically like an oblongated circle. Now this looks a little ugly in our preview so let's give it a frame. Let's call the bottom here dot frame. Let's do a width and height. And we'll do a width of 200, a height of 100, and alignment we don't need. So I'll just delete it for now. And we can see we have our nice ellipse here. We can also, on the ellipse, do all of these same modifiers that we did on a circle. So we could add the fill, or maybe we'll comment that out and we'll do uh, the stroke here. And then we can also do, let's do this stroke with the orange and the spaces. And uh, finally, we can do trim and all the same stuff we did with circle, but now we can do it with an ellipse. So we can get some really cool shapes going here. Let's keep moving forward. I'm going to comment out this trim. Let's comment out this ellipse. And now we can add a capsule instead. Capsule looks kind of like an ellipse, but it also has a style. So let's use that. And for the style, we have the option of circular and continuous. And you can see in the preview how it's going to change a little bit. This is a continuous capsule. This is a circular capsule. It basically just changes the corners a very little bit. Um, but these are really useful if you want to put this like behind a text or behind a button. It's a pretty cool looking shape. And again, on the capsule, we can change all of these modifiers. We can fill. We can add the stroke. I'm not going to go through all of this with you guys. You can play around with this to make really cool uh, shapes. And one of the most important shapes that we haven't done yet is the rectangle. Let's comment out the capsule. So we have a nice rectangle. And even more important than the regular rectangle is the rounded rectangle. So let's do a rounded rectangle. Let's open the parentheses. And then we have the corner radius completion here. And we can change the corner radius to whatever we want. Let's start it with a big corner. Let's do 50. And you can see how it basically ends up looking kind of like a capsule. Uh, but let's change the frame to make it a little bigger so we can see our corners better. So let's do 
a width of maybe uh, 300 and a height of uh, 200. So then we have these big 50 corner radius. We can also change this and make it nice and small. We can do 10 and we have these nice little corners. And you're gonna find this rounded rectangle to be really useful in a lot of things. We can add text on top of it. We could add pictures on top of it. Uh, and it's used in a whole lot of screens. So pretty neat that it comes by default in Xcode. And again, just like we did with the circle, we could change all of these modifiers on this. So we can add a fill color, we can make it green. We can change the stroke color, a nice red outline. Uh, we can do a trim and the trims also look pretty cool on rounded rectangles. Let's do maybe 0 0.5 to 1.0 and we can get this really cool effect here. So that's the basics of shapes and I just wanted to introduce you guys to it briefly in this video. We're going to get more into the complexities of shapes and gradients and custom colors and shadows as we move on in this course. Uh, but now you know the very basics of how to add a shape to the screen, how to customize the shape, how to add a border. Uh, so that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. This was a quick one. So once again, I'm Nick, this is Swiftful Thinking, and I'll see you guys in the next video.